Saint Cyril of Jerusalem. Who are the blessed Christians with the opportunity to confess faith and die as martyrs? During the time of Antichrist, to me, they are the greatest martyrs of all. Saint Augustine of Hippo argues that the millennium is the time when the church restrains Satan, preaches the gospel, and liberates sinners. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them, that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand tachilias, Revelation 20-2, 4. In Greek, Kilia Eta, the word Kilis is singular. Translated as a thousand, Eta is plural, signifying not one year, but a thousand years. The English translation is a thousand years. Additionally, the term Chiliasm is derived from the Greek transliteration Kilis. The Bible does not teach that the coming of Jesus Christ will establish a kingdom lasting a thousand years. Instead, the scriptures affirm that his coming will establish an eternal and everlasting kingdom. While Revelation 20 to 1 to 6 mentions living and reigning for a thousand years, it is essential to recognize that the language used in Revelation 20 is symbolic. The text uses symbolic language, referring to Satan as a dragon that can be chained and thrown into a pit verse 3. Taking this literally would imply that Satan has a physical body, which contradicts Paul's assertion that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6, 11, 12 Understanding the symbolic nature of Revelation 20 emphasizes the need for consistent interpretation. If it is acknowledged as symbolism, all evidence should be consistently interpreted symbolically. Interpreting one element symbolically and another literally is inconsistent. When the dragon is interpreted as a symbol of the devil and then the thousand years and kingdom are interpreted literally, it becomes inconsistent, unstable, and discordant. If the devil is a symbol that should be understood spiritually, why should a thousand years and kingdom be understood literally? Based on this inconsistent and arbitrary interpretation, the Church rejects the teaching that Christ's coming is to establish a kingdom, lasting a thousand years. Additionally, the Church rejects this teaching because Christ's coming, based on available data, is to establish an eternal and everlasting kingdom not limited to a mere thousand years. Furthermore, the Church has long understood that the thousand-year kingdom points to the existence of the Church in the world, the duration of which cannot be determined. To understand the term a thousand years, used six times in the book of Revelation chapter 20, later explained as the Millennium Kingdom, we need to delve into the background of Jewish rabbinic writings. Some rabbis explained the history of humanity based on the calculation of time through the Book of Enoch. This book states that the history of humanity is divided into ten periods, weeks, cycles. By the first century BC, seven periods had already passed. The first century after Christ marks the beginning of the eighth period, symbolized by a sword given to the righteous, initiating the rule of God's family Messiah's millennium. Shortly after the ninth period begins, where the wicked are destined for destruction and the righteous multiply, until the tenth period when they judge the wicked and the kingdom of God arrives. The tangible manifestation of the thousand-year kingdom of God on earth compare Book of Enoch 93, following the poetic structure used in the Book of Revelation and understanding a thousand years from the perspective of the entire biblical doctrine. 
It is straightforward. 1,000 equals 10 by 10 by 10, indicating a perfect fulfillment. The significance of the number 1,000 in. Revelation chapter 20 is not to be taken literally. Since the number 10 signifies completion, the meaning of 1,000 is the completion of divine plans over the years. So, when is the divine plan fulfilled? But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, Galatians 4-4. The fulfillment of the divine plan is from the time Jesus came to earth until his second coming. Therefore, the 1,000-year period is the current era of the church, extending until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. During this 1,000-year period, the deception of the devil is restrained, confined, and limited by the proclamation of the gospel of Christ through the church. Until the second coming of Jesus Christ, the perspective of the church father Augustine of Hippo 354 to for 30 AD, a prominent figure in North African Christianity. In his book titled The City of God states, In these thousand years, it signifies the first coming of Christ and a period in the final battle, the reign of the saints, encompassing the entirety of the kingdom of heaven. At the arrival of judgment, Satan will be bound, and the sinners will be freed. The first resurrection indicates the moment when believers receive holy baptism, participating in spiritual rebirth read the city of God. 20-7 Augustine argues that the millennium is the time when the church restrains Satan, preaches the gospel, and liberates sinners. This millennium is none other than the time of Christ's first coming to the world and the period of the church at his second coming. Augustine's millennial view was embraced by the Roman Catholic Church as well as the reformers Martin Luther and John Calvin. Therefore, from the 4th century to the 16th century, or for 1200 years, very few theologians discussed the millennial kingdom. Even in modern times, few theologians from the Lutheran and reformed churches maintain this millennial perspective Moving on to the Church Father St. Cyril of Jerusalem, 386 AD. In his writing Catechesis on the Holy Spirit, paragraph 15, he writes, Who are the blessed Christians? With the opportunity to confess faith and die as martyrs during the time of Antichrist, to me, they are the greatest martyrs of all. From this, we understand that Antichrist will come, and every believer will experience persecution and suffering during the time of Antichrist. Meanwhile, the teaching of rapture and chiliasm, which advocates the lifting of believers from the time of Antichrist, has for versions. Rapture before the time of Antichrist. In the midst of the time of Antichrist, near the end of the time of Antichrist, and partial rapture during the time of Antichrist. St. Cyril of Jerusalem provides a clear affirmation, while proponents of rapture theories grapple with their perversions. It is evident that the concept of rapture is a spectacular imagination, unknown to the early church, unthought of by the Holy Fathers. And even among Chile as a adherents in the early church era, rapture was unknown. Church tradition teaches that believers will become martyrs, when Antichrist comes, Chile as adherents in the early church era belonged to groups like Montanism and the Serinthus group considered heretical, and they also did not know the term rapture.